Hi, um, so today I want to show you uh, some color things just because um, for an artist, color is like really cool and and figuring out how to get to different color combinations is sort of always a trick. So there's, you know, just mixed color and then there's optical color where you're layering almost transparent or semi-transparent layers and then you get a color. And so I want to show you two paintings first that I'm working on where I arrived at this rich golden brown color in two different ways. And then um, and then I've got a third painting here. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with, and I've changed the surface or the, the darks and lights, you know, moving things around and the colors around a few times because what I wanted to do was create this grouping of three pieces, um, a 24 by 24 with uh, two accompanying pieces that sort of tell the same story. And the story is a little bit about nature, a little bit about autumn and, you know, golden colors, brown, you know, sort of those warm autumn colors. These are my grandmother's colors that she just loved. and. And I really love that pop of blue, and I love, love, love yellow. Yellow is like my go-to, most favorite color in the world because it just always makes me feel happy. So, um, so I'm gonna reposition the camera here, please don't get nauseated, and show you these paintings, and then um, you can see me add some color to this third panel, and maybe, it will be something that speaks to me and feels right, and maybe it won't because it's always a crapshoot. So anyway, let me reposition the camera a little bit so you get to see my messy table. I'm gonna move this around. So this piece here is the one that, when I did this, I used um, some multiple layering of color with the brayer to get to that color. And I use a transparent red oxide, uh, burnt umber, um, and a burnt sienna to sort of get this mottled brown deepness. And that of course is over the blues and over some, like a multitude of other colors. There's just a ton of color in here. And then, and then sort of accidentally, but I kind of know this will happen when I put down yellow and then I put purple on top of it. You can get close to a, a beautiful brown, but it has a different quality to it. And But yet it goes. So this is the second piece where I did that. And, and this is where I did that scraping out and then, you know, uh, this little flower puff thing sort of appeared and I just went with it. And, uh, and so this is that area where I've done yellow and some transparent orange and then let it dry. And then I've come back over it with a transparent, uh, I think it's de deoxazine purple. Which purple is it that I'm using? It's, um, oh, it's a manganese violet actually, which is, you know, kind of lay terms purple. And, uh, and, and I put that over it and then I, then I spritzed it with the um, Gamsol and let it sit for a second to give this dappled effect and then scraped it off. And that's what gave me this. And, and some of this was quite accidental. And, and so I just responded to it. So now what I have, let me adjust the camera again. Hold on to your seat. So now what I have is this piece here. I'm gonna move the thing around this piece here that I wanted it to go with the other two. I have, I'm undecided about whether I want to put any element in it. I sort of have a larger piece that says, you know, foliage, fall foliage, then I have a floral piece. And my thought was I might put a bird in this. And then I've got a grouping that really sort of all works together, but it's got enough abstract in it to satisfy my need for abstraction. So I won't move that, but I don't want to move it out of the camera there. So here I had this, I had sort of a dark blue in here, picking up this dark blue here in this area. And I, 
I don't know, I just didn't like it. I really want to stay predominantly with the warm spectrum of these oranges, yellows, and and that kind of that glowing or golden brown, or even this, you know, this color here. So I've spread out some colors and my intention is to, to work over this a little bit and see what happens. And then I'll let that sit for a while and then perhaps I'll come back and uh, put a bird in it. And maybe I'll put an orb under the bird like I've done with my other, couple of my other birds recently where, I, you know, they sort of don't use their wings. They use an orb to fly on, which makes it different and fun and has a whimsical story side to it. So I'm trying to decide, haven't committed that's always really crazy is that that place where you sort of commit. That's always hard for me. I don't know why I have an issue with commitment, but anyway. Okay, so I have a brayer, but this one is too large. So I'm collecting up my tools here, my pile of mess. And this is my, my little two inch brayer here, which I sort of like. So I think I will start with some of this red, this kind of a red, red oxide, I think is what it's called. Yeah, it's this color here. It's um, transparent maroon, actually, is what this one is. And for those of you wondering, these are, these are all oils with, um, with cold wax. So the, um, oh, I'm liking that, I'm liking that red a lot, and I like seeing a little bit of that, I like seeing a little bit of this peeping out, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this. Um, I know um, a lot of artists use their fingers, and my friend Lisa Broadwine, uh, I don't know her in person, but I just love watching her videos. She does a lot of, a lot of this finger stumbling too and um if you haven't checked her videos go check them out they're pretty awesome and uh, that was an unsolicited advertisement for for lisa but so so i want to spritz a little gamsol on this and lately i've been wearing a mask when i spritz gamsol because because i think it's you know it's it's got a little bit of toxicity in it um but it's hard to talk on camera with that and so, um, so you can kind of see what that does in terms of it, of it adjusting um, the, um, the, this sort of gives it this lacy effect, which, which I really love adding to my work. It's sort of one of the things that I enjoy doing. And then I enjoy this scripting part of this work. And already just getting rid of the blue and continuing this golden, brownish, red, yellow, uh, warm color here. It, it feels so much, much better to me. And so um, I'm going to try a little bit of this, this um, burnt sienna on here. Let me load this brayer up and just kind of layer some of that in and uh, and see if that kind of helps you know, kind of gives it, because I really wanted, a, you know, more of a dimensional sort of thing, dimensional color, um, and this is a, this is a dark, uh, I mean, um, what is this, this is burnt umber, so this is even, you know, even darker, pull in some of that on the edge there, almost black, and as a matter of fact, I've, I've got some Got a little black mixed up here. Maybe I'll put with it because I really think it needs a little bit of depth in here. And again, this is a this is a rather small piece, and it could get modified, or I could just you know leave it as is because I I'm sort of liking sort of liking that the way that it is. But I think I'll pull. Some of this dark over here. A 
let's let that be like that. And I like that there's a little bit of this, this pop of blue poking out underneath. I think, um, I think there's something to be said for some of that. I don't know if that's going to do anything or not, not really. And I could pull back some of it in here, maybe. But, um, just wanted a touch of, a touch of that blue, not an overwhelming blue painting. Um, so when you, you know, just when you're working with colors, it's nice to have your dominant and then if, and then just a touch of some opposite thing on the color wheel because it just adds a little interest and boy, I sure like those, those chips that are appearing in there. Let's see if I can dig some more out without it destroying the painting, but I, I kind of like that peeping through a little bit. That makes it interesting to me. Anyway, I'm, I'm a little happier with it now, and um, so I'll let that just sort of sit around for a while, and we will see if this ends up being something that I stick with. And, and I don't know if you noticed before, but on these other ones, there is a, there is a little bit of, um, of gold that I popped in on those. And, uh, and so, of course, to make it a trio, on this one, um, I would want to pop in some gold in a couple of places. And if I put a bird on it, I, I maybe I'll put gold on the bird's wings just to kind of pull it all together. But that's today's thing. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And, uh, and if you're not a painter, I hope this inspired you to own some original art because original art is the bomb. That's all I got to say. Bye.